to minister to the needs in our community like never before. I pray that you raise up people, Lord God, that will not just get excited on today, but Lord God, that a passion and a burden would begin to dig deep down within their innermost being to see addicts saved and delivered in the name of Jesus, counseled and set free in the name of Jesus. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we take dominion and authority right now against everything that would try to hinder the free flow of your spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we release faith, God, for the impossible. Miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Right now, God, we're claiming that people that are sick in body are going to be made whole. Right now, we believe in the name of Jesus the anointing destroys the yoke 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 hallelujah oh let's continue to worship and praise him right now hallelujah in the name of Jesus come on somebody be liberated somebody be liberated do you know who your God is today do you know who your God is today there is none you King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, God. Yes, God. We bow before you today, God. We confess Jesus Christ is Lord. There is none like our God.
you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for meeting us here in this place this morning, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody feel the presence of the Lord here this morning? Amen. He is filling this place where two or three are gathered. He's going to be in the midst of them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. be seated. Jesus. Lord, we treasure your presence, God. We so treasure your presence, God. We do have a men's conference coming up this next week. Uh, it's Friday and Saturday in Hickory Hills. 
So there's a, you can see announcements in various places around the church and find out more information on that. And uh, <clears throat> I want to honor a couple today that's here, uh, Gary and Pam Newberry. I honor them today. <clears throat> They were the ones that are responsible for me being in this church and in this. We know ultimately it's the Lord, right? But he used these vessels to, to bring me to this church some, some 35 years ago. So thank you, Gary Camp. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, amen. Last Sunday morning we spoke about. We spoke about the coming of the Lord. He's coming back for a people that have made themselves ready. Hallelujah. It's getting ready time. I said if you're not ready, you need to get ready. You need to be ready. Better be ready. Somebody get ready. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I knew if I went back into that verse, this place would just blow up, but I want to hear my pastor preach today. Amen, amen, amen. Because he can blow this place up with the anointing that's in him as well. Praise God. We are thrilled to have Pastor David Rogers with us. As I mentioned yesterday, he's my pastor. Amen. He's meant a lot to me down through the years, him and his wife. And uh, they have mentored me and impacted my life and ministry. They had me preaching when I wasn't even, shouldn't have been preaching. They had me preaching. And they have suffered through a lot of sermons back in those days, 30-some years ago, preaching youth services for them and different things. And I so honor and appreciate them. And men that have invested in my life, uh, like he and others, amen, I, I, just, I, just, I just love them so dearly. And uh, I, I know that uh, uh, you have some people in your life that have prayed with you and counseled you and comforted you and just been there in your life. And thank God. Thank God for them. He is pastor, founding pastor of Apostolic Life, Champaign-Urbana. And also, as we heard in the first service, Lifeline Connect Ministries is under their direction. Sister Rogers is the administrator of that. They're doing a great job seeing hundreds of people's lives changed. And we thank the Lord for that. But he is a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is anointed of the Lord. He has come with a message. And without any further ado, can we just get out of the way and let God speak? Let God speak through his man today in Jesus' name. Bless you, Pastor Rogers. Oh, let's clap our hands under the Lord. Give God praise. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you. May be seated for a minute. I give honor to Pastor Cox and First Lady Cox and their family, and Pastor Kidder, all the ministers, leaders, and the children of faith. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. On behalf of Apostolic Life, Iglesia Vita Apostolica in Urbana, we greet you. And I share the sentiments uh, that Pastor Cox expressed. We are friends. Longtime friends, family friends, and uh, it's a great honor and privilege, and I'm humbled to be here and teach this session. Thank you, worship leaders, singers, and musicians, and I've asked your organist, if she wants to just stay and back me up while I'm preach, that'll make me feel so good. Amen. Hallelujah. So... I'm going to teach today on a thought I believe the Lord directed us to for this session. And it will not be profound to you. You will not say, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Because you're a worshiping church. You're a worshiping people. And this has to do with worship somewhat. So it's not that I'm trying to bring you something new, but I believe the, the Lord wants to confirm. Turn to your neighbor and say, confirm. Confirm. The Lord wants to confirm to you perhaps a truth that you already know. If not, it will be profound to you. It will inspire you and will be a direction that you'll want to go into. 
but I do believe the Lord has given it to us. And again, what a privilege and honor to be here on behalf of my wife and myself. And <clears throat> let's just get into it. Amen. Have you ever been to a, an event like a parade or an air show or a sporting event, a concert, or one of those uh, like the like the animal shows at SeaWorld or any anywhere? And there's a crowd of people standing, and they're watching, and they're enjoying, and and you know the 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 show's on, and everybody's excited. But then you notice there's a little there's a little one, there's a little four, five, six year old that's like kind of behind the crowd. Maybe maybe dad and mom forgot about them seeing the show for just a moment, and they're not in the right position to see what everybody else is seeing. And while all the bigs are enjoying and all the bigs are going, ooh, oh, and they're applauding or whatever, you know, catching the, the show, the view of the little one is hindered. All they're really seeing is the backside of the big ones, seeing the pockets and so forth. And so they're just catching a glimpse at the very best of what's going on. So from their eye level, uh, they're mostly seeing knees and waist and their view is blocked and when this happens, there's a certain level of anxiety that kicks into that little. Okay. That little realizes they're missing something. They're missing what they traveled in the car to come see. They're missing what it's all about. And so there's an anxiety that kicks in and, and they, can't, uh, they can't match what they're hearing sure. with what they're seeing. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you today. What they hear things going on, they know things are going on, but what they see doesn't match with what they hear. All right. Are you with me? Sure. And so that anxiety uh, transforms into a mild case of desperation. And in that desperation to see what's going on, to know why the people are applauding and what the crowd is enjoying, and even what their mother or father or whoever brought them uh, are taking in, that anxiety turns into that desperation, and that quickly evolves into some type of action, and all of a sudden that little one is, is pulling on a, on a blue jean pocket and saying, Daddy, da Daddy, 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 Daddy! You know, and if, it, if the daddy's so caught up in the moment he don't get the attention, the little child, the boy or girl put two hands in two pockets and, you know, almost, you know what I'm saying, and just... Daddy, 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 and they'll hit them on the back and they'll run the next person. They don't care if it's a stranger. Hey, 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 daddy. <laughs> daddy, 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 lift me up so I can see. Daddy, I, I can't see very good from down here. Uh, pick me up so I can see what's going on. And, and of course, that, that dad turns around and realizes, oh, my, I forgot about my kid. <laughs> and, and they reach down and they pick that little one up and they... they they lift that baby up so that baby can see what's going on. Now, I want, I want to talk to you about that because the child knows when he's reaching for that. He knows that daddy is strong enough to pick him up. God. That child knows that, that daddy hears that cry. And that child has confidence and faith that their daddy loves them enough sure, uh, sure. that eventually that daddy will... Will, will reach to those outstretched hands and will respond and he'll lift that child up. And of course, the, the father wants the child to know what's going on. That's why he bought his ticket. He wants that child to enjoy what's happening and understand uh, to, to what's going on. But for that child to get there, daddy has to elevate him. Yeah. Daddy has to get him up to a place where he can view. So yeah. the father bends down. He scoops the child up, lifts him up to a new and better perspective and a new viewpoint so the child can see what daddy sees. And the child can then understand what's going on. And I come to tell somebody today that when we go through this thing called life, uh, oftentimes uh, we are much like that child and sometimes we have a limited view of things and sometimes from our natural viewpoint uh, and from our sight line and from our perspective, we can, what we see in our natural eyes brings us anxiety and sometimes that anxiety turns into apprehensions and some level of fear or frustration in it 
in our lives, we're left without a clear understanding. And oftentimes, it can bring us to a point of doubt and despair. But I've come to declare there is a solution to our limited perception. There is a solution to our limited perspective. Clear the runway, church of the living God. There's a word of faith that's going to land in this house today, and you need to be ready to receive it. Are you ready for a word of God? Are you ready for a word of faith? Are you ready? for a word that can affect your life? Uh, are you ready for a rhema word of God uh, that can change a situation in your life? Does anybody have faith up in this house today? Does anybody believe uh, that you can catch a word from God uh, that'll help you through your difficulty, that'll help you through your trouble, uh, that'll help you through your situation? Uh, I gotta tell somebody today, uh, when we have that anxiety, there is a father that you can call upon. There is a father who is strong enough. There is a father that hears your cry. There is a father who cares about you. There is a father that loves you so much. He's not going to leave you alone. He's going to pick you up. He's going to lift you up. And he's going to let you see a little bit clearer what's going on in your life. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, I got to let my daddy lift me up. I've got to let my daddy lift me up. There is a way to get a better viewpoint. There is a way to get a better understanding. There is a way to get out of the anxiety. There is a way to escape the fear and that feeling of not understanding. Just like a little boy knows how to get elevated to a better view. Our Lord has designed a way. He doesn't want us left out. He doesn't want us to have a limited view. God has designed designed a way that you and I like that little child can get the attention of our father if we want to you gotta have the want to you gotta have the desire you gotta have a want to that says I want to see a little clearer I want to know a little bit more I want to understand what's going on in my life I gotta tell somebody if you sit in the natural too long you're gonna be fearful if you sit in the natural you're gonna be doubtful after a while that's why you got to get elevated that's why you got to let your daddy pick you up that's why you got to let your daddy elevate you so you can see what you can't see in the natural oh somebody hear the word of the Lord if we're after the flesh we receive the things of the flesh if we're just in the flesh we understand as in the flesh but when we get after the spirit that's when we can receive uh, the things of the Spirit. Uh, does anybody want to go uh, a little farther than you've ever been before? Does anybody want to go uh, a little deeper than you've ever been before? Does anybody want to go a little higher than you've ever been before? Uh, i got to tell you, we can't do it if we remain quiet. We can't be content not seeing what our Father wants us to see. we got to cry out, lift me up, Daddy. i got to see. Uh, I would somebody get it in your spirit today uh, that says lift me up daddy uh, I gotta see uh, I gotta get a better viewpoint uh, I gotta get a better viewpoint uh, because I don't want to fear I don't want to doubt uh, I don't want to be left out uh, come on somebody lift your hands up and put some praise on the word today yeah to me, I don't know about you, but to me, this is an illustration of true worship and prayer. This is the posture. This is the posture that our Lord God is waiting for you and I to get into. It's a desire, but it's not only a desire. It's a revelation that I can't live without you. I can't see without you. I can't get alone without you. I can't be a good man without you. I can't be a good saint without you. I can't be a good citizen without you. I've got to have your lifting, Lord. I've got to have your lifting, Lord. Oh, God, I have a confidence when I 
call upon his name, Pastor. I have a confidence just like a little five-year-old boy that's confident that his father will hear his cry and confident that my father's going to pick me up. Uh, that's the same kind of faith uh, and confidence uh, that we've got to have in our God, in our Heavenly Father, that he does hear when we cry. Oh, do you hear what the Lord's saying? He does hear when we cry, and he's made a way that we can get his attention. And we just got to call daddy, 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 lift me up. I got to tell somebody today, the Lord does not intend his children to have a low point of view. But he doesn't want us to have just an earthly perspective and understanding of things in this world. That's why we are the children of faith. That's why we are the children of God. He has placed the Holy Ghost in you. So you have an understanding that's above your natural understanding. He's given you an insight that's above your natural insight. Come on, somebody. We've got to understand our Father doesn't want us all the time being down here on a low level. A low level. Thinking about only the things in this earth. Thinking about only the things of this world. But God wants to elevate us. He wants to lift his children up to a higher plane of understanding. He wants us to be a place where we know by the Holy Ghost what's going on in the spiritual world. Not just the earthly world, but in the spiritual world. I'm here to declare that worship, prayer, true pray and worship always gets his attention. Now let me just draw you a little picture here. If the little five or six year old darling had just stood back behind the crowd and said, well, I guess I won't see what's going on. I hear a lot of joy going on. I hear a lot of applause going on. I hear a lot of something going on over there. But what if that little five year old had just stayed back there complacent and just made no noise and just stood there and the show went on and 30 minutes later, somebody would have said, how'd you like the show, little one? And the little one said, I didn't see nothing but the backside of a bunch of folk. I need a little help in here. Hallelujah. It would be the same thing as coming into the house of God. Oh, Lord, I told you yesterday I like to provoke folk. And provoke don't mean a negative way to irritate you, but I got to provoke somebody right now. If that little boy hadn't have made some noise, he would have missed everything that was going on. That's why when I get up in the morning, I'm going to bless the Lord, oh my soul. While I live, I'm going to give him some praise. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We are made. We are in a relationship with our Heavenly Father that he expects us to make some noise. He expects us to know what's going on. All right, let me, let, me, let me teach here for just a moment. I'm not talking about learn behavior, routine, ritual worship. I mentioned it yesterday. I'll tell it like it is. I'm talking about myself and the church that I oversee. We can learn how to have good church. I mean, we can have good church. Y'all can have good church. And I want us to think in a dimension beyond the corporate worship here. Because most of the time when I'm facing my severest troubles in life, I'm not with you all. I'm not in the house of God. I'm out there. Most of the time when I'm facing life challenges, I'm out there. I'm not in a corporate worship. Thank God for the worship that transpired here today that went up, the sincere worship. But it's comfortable worshiping in a corporate setting. But God doesn't want us just limited to a corporate worship. He wants us to understand one-on-one -on -one worship. Oh, you got quiet on me. Individual worship. I'm saying today that this this, this principle applies when we're all alone. And worship that originates from faith 
and worship that says, I believe you're able, and worship that says, I believe you hear my cry, and worship that believes he will lift me up. That's the kind of worship that is connected with revelation. That's the kind of worship that is connected with understanding and a knowledge of who Jesus is in our lives. John chapter 4. Jesus is with a woman at a well and he's talking. They're talking. What are they talking about? They're talking about worship. The hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must worship. Everybody say must worship. That word in the Greek there is prokoneo. Prokoneo means to move toward God. How many of you know your worship's got to have some action to it? That's what Jesus said. When he talked about worship, true worship, he said it's worship that moves toward God. So my worship that just is in response to a worship leader. All right now. My worship that just responds to a corporate environment may not be all that's needed. I'll say it that way. That's nice, wasn't it? Wasn't that nice, Pastor? That was a nice way of saying it. Maybe it's not all that I need is to come into the sanctuary of praise and let the organists and the musicians light the place up, play skillfully upon the the instruments, uh, and the choirs sing Make a joyful noise. And I am caught up in that corporate moment of worship. Can I remind you that Jesus is at the well with one woman all alone when he gave this revelation to her that true worship is a worship that moves toward God. It's not a worship that just is a part of a corporate uh, exertion of praise and singing and lifting of voices. Don't get quiet on me, church. I love y'all. I'm just giving you what God sent me with, all right? But at some point, we've got to be in an alone situation because it's in those times when we're with Jesus Christ alone is when we get a revelation of who he is. He said, woman... I'm not just going to talk to you about worship. I'm going to give you a revelation about worship. And true worship moves toward God. I wonder today if we would get in our private prayer closets and in the privacy of our own devotions and we would learn how to move toward God without an organ, without a pastor present, without a worship leader, without a church environment. That's when we're going to get our greatest revelations of who God is. This woman said, well, I heard the Messiah is coming. They're talking about worship. They're talking about true worship, moving toward God. She said, well, I heard the Messiah is coming. He said, woman, you're looking at the Messiah. This is the revelation we get when we get into true worship. I wish somebody put your hands together right now and thank God. See, worship then is connected to revelation. And worship is connected to understanding. And worship is connected to knowledge of who Jesus is. All right, you ready for this? Little worship. Little revelation. If worship is connected to revelation, and I believe the scripture bears that out, then little worship, little revelation. No worship, no revelation. I like it when it gets quiet. Big worship, grande adoration, big worship, big revelation, big worship, big understanding, big worship, big knowledge of who he is. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, I can tell you, you're like a sponge right now. You need a little more. There is another level of understanding and revelation and knowledge that comes when we worship God. Okay, so here we go. I'll calm down. I think it's Mark chapter 8. And Jesus is in the house with his disciples. And they're talking heavy duty church stuff. Deep theological issues. And they're talking to Jesus. And I'm trying to get a mental picture. See, I'm one of these guys, I read the scripture. And I didn't even start reading the Bible until I was almost 24 years old. So I was amazed when I read the Bible. And the way I could understand it is to dramatize it in my mind. And so I still do that. So Jesus is sitting in this house. And all these disciples and these religious guys, very religious guys, are having a discussion about the law of the word of God. Deep stuff. Debate debate, I'm right, you're right, let's talk about it for another while. And I'm getting a mental picture of Jesus like going, oh. I mean, you can read it, Mark chapter 8, you can read it. You'll see the same thing. Jesus is like, oh, when are you guys going to stop? Because they've ceased asking him, and then somebody had the nerve to bring the kids in. So all these kids, I guess it got dark or something. So all the babies started running in the house. And the disciples, those religious guys, those churchy guys, keep the kids out of the way. Keep them kids back from Jesus. We're talking about big, big boy stuff up in here. Keep those kids away. And Jesus being bored to death. These guys hammering on the law when grace and truth is sitting in the room. Come on. When revelation and knowledge is wisdom of all the ages is sitting in the room, they're talking about the letter of the law. Kids come in making a lot of noise. You know what kids do. 20 kids come in and the disciples are going, ah, come on, get the kids out of here. And Jesus said, that was his cue. That was his cue. He said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Bring them babies over here. Bring them babies over here. Six foot one Jesus. Well, you don't know him. Six foot one Jesus and them little babies up in there and the disciples over here going, oh, no, our class is ruined. And Jesus said, allow those babies to come to me. And the scripture says he what? He picked them up in his arms and he blessed them. Are you getting the picture? Did you get the picture of the little boy at the air show? His six foot one daddy had to turn around, pick him up so he could see what's going on. And Jesus, six foot one, picked these little babies up. And the scripture says he picked them up in his arms and he what? He blessed them. Yes, he did. I, I'm, I'm trying to be really, really, I'm trying not to get myself in a bind here. But in my mind, it was like church was going on. All the disciples, all the big boys having church. And then the kids come in. The disciples are saying, they're going to mess this up. They're going to mess church up. And Jesus said, no, I'm going to show you what church is all about. Come on, preach it. Church is all about picking babies up. Yeah, that's right. Church is all about our father picking us up in his arms and blessing us. It gets better. Hold on with me. It gets better. And all the disciples over there, and I'm seeing this in my mind, the disciples over there, some of them, their mouth is just stuck wide open because they were in men's sittings explaining what the law meant. And when they saw grace and truth picking babies up and blessing them, I go, (laughs) 
And then Jesus did the coolest thing for us. He looked at all those churchy guys. I ain't got nothing at church. I hang out there a lot. But he looked at all that churchy thing going on and all that debating the word thing going on and all about who's the best and who's, the, who's right and who's correct and who's, who's got this, who don't. And Jesus said, I'm going to bless these little kids because when I, when I reached down, they reached up. You can't get a little one in a six foot one unless there's some reaching down and there's some reaching up. And that's what God sent me here on this day to tell somebody. He wants to pick you up in an experience like you've never had in your life before. I know he's picked you up before. I know some of you, he picked you up and you were flatter than a pancake in life and he picked you up and brought you to life. But I'm telling you, there's a new one. There's a new experience. And yes, God sent this little preacher to tell somebody, yeah. if it's just one person, I'll go home fulfilled. The one person that gets this and says, you know what? I'm going to be that little kid that run into the church while everybody else was doing their thing. And I'm going to lift my hands up and say, Jesus, can you pick me up one more time? Can you bless me one more time? Can you pick me up in your loving arms one more time? Can you just breathe on me a little bit, Jesus? Can you just let me feel the strength of your loving arm? Can I just get in your arms one more time and realize that I am a child that you love. I am a child that you've redeemed. I am a child that you will pick up and carry through my trouble. Somebody put some praise on the word right now. Receive this word right now. Then it gets better than that. Then Jesus looked at all those churchy guys. He said, hey guys, I want to tell you something. I'm paraphrasing. You won't find this in any version. He said, hey guys, have a nice church up in here today, huh? But while you have a nice church up in here, I just gave the church of 2021 a revelation. Because Jesus can do that because he sees forward, see. But he says to those guys, unless you become like them, you will never enter into, understand, comprehend, or perceive the kingdom of God. Amen. So if you want what they just got, you better get off of your high horse church business and get a a spirit of humility and a spirit of desire that says, lift me up, daddy. Lift me up, daddy. He said, unless you become like them and you do what they did, you'll never receive what they just received. I don't know about you today, but I don't want to go a day without praising him. I don't want to go a day without worshiping him. I don't want to go a day without confessing to him. You're my father. I need you. I need you to pick me up. I need you to touch my mind. I need you to touch my spirit. I need you to touch my body. Hey, somebody put some praise on the word here. Mm, James 4 and 10. Uh, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And what will he do? He will lift you up. Oh, glory to God. I feel a little preach coming on here today. Pastor, is this all right? It's all right? There's three times in the scripture... That the God directed the authors, or the writers, I should say, to use this phrase, Abba, Father. Three times, Abba, Father. It just seemed like it was the right thing to do at the right moment. Many references to God as our Father without the Abba. But in these three references, one is in Matthew when Jesus is praying in the garden and he's submitting his will to will of the Father and he's giving the ultimate sacrifice and, and the ultimate of sacrifice in his, his body, his flesh at, at the crucifixion. And that's when he prayed, not my will but your, he said, Abba, Father. 
Another instance in Galatians when Paul is explaining that we are the children of faith and we need to understand that that relationship is that we are children of faith and God is our Father and that's why we should have confidence going toward God because He's our Father. And the third instance is in Romans 8 verse 15 when Paul says, For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, that we are the children of God and we have privileges because we are the children of God and I would like to tell you that Abba Father is like that little baby Jewish baby that cries to his daddy says Abba Father Abba 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 and that's nice and sweet and makes me feel real good but that's not scripturally what it means well the reason the word Abba is used in reference to crying out to our father is that is an emphasis on the intensity and the fervency and the urgency which we are to engage with our Heavenly Father asking Him to lift us up. So I'm telling you, just like the little kid, if he would have patted his dad's pocket and, and just very lightly and then gave up, his daddy may have totally forgot him the whole event. But there was an urgency, an intenseness, a desire that said, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy. It was like, you know, it's like I'm your kid. I'm your child. And I don't think that God uh, wants us to go through our spiritual journey without this revelation that we have certain privileges and honors uh, because we're the king's kids uh, and we're the children of God and he wants us to cry, Abba, Father. But that Abba, Father cry has to be with an intensity and an intimacy that we have an understanding of that it's just not a God that may help me or he may not. No, I'm going to tell you like the psalmist said, he's the lifter of my head. He lifts up those that are bowed down. If he hears our cry, he will come see about us uh, somebody some praise here today now we need to put this word of faith into action it's a, it's a sign of worship right it's also a sign of surrender a universal sign of surrender We've got to mix our worship with surrender. A surrender of our will. I'll tell you why this is so real to me, and I'll close. I was 17 years old. I, I, I mentioned it yesterday. I was intoxicated. And I was in a pond. And I, I lost my mind. And I went down under the water. And I remember coming up out of the water. There were two other young men in the pond at the same time. I remember going down the second time and then coming up and trying to say something to get their attention. And then I remember going down the third time. And I remember as distinctly as I can, Pastor, I had hands and one of them told me later, he said, we saw your hand. And when they saw my hand going down like that, they rescued me. My God, this is a true picture. When we reach for God, He's going to see your reach. I got, I got saved. I was uh, 20, some year, 20 some years old, and I, I went into the church. I'd never been in church in my life. Uh, there's a backstory to all that, but I never, I never got it. And I was in church, and one of the first songs that they ever sang in church that, to my hearing was, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stayed within. I was sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea Heard my despairing cry. You know what I'm talking about? I'm 23 year old sitting on a church pew for the first time in my life and they're singing that song. I said, my God, that's me. <laughs> love lifted me. Oh, love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. You know what I'm talking about?
talking about? Does anybody relate? I was going down for the last time. Brother Dude, I was going down for the last time. And I knew it. But that one reach, that one reach rescued me. And I believe that somebody's watching this or in this house today. It's just one reach. One reach to your heavenly father. And he's going to hear your cry. I have to cry sometimes in my troubles. But when I call on him, he lifts me up. And when I don't see a way, he lifts me up and shows me there's going to be a way through. I'm going through my affliction. And I cry out of my father, lift me up. And when he lifts me up, he shows me that he will deliver me from my affliction. Come on, church of the living God. Do you know what I'm talking about? We've got a God who will deliver the righteous from all affliction. I've got a call on his name. I've got a call on his name. Come on, you've got a call on his name right now. Hey, daddy. Daddy, daddy, daddy. I don't want to miss what's going on. Somebody lift up some praise to him right now. Daddy, I don't want to miss what's going on in my life. I got to talk to somebody here today in the Holy Ghost. Somebody, you've been praying for a healing and the healing hasn't come yet. Let your daddy lift you up. Let your daddy lift you up today and renew that faith. You don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm like he's got it going on. But lift me up, daddy. I want to see what's happening. Hey, somebody, if you're sinking deep in sin, uh, why don't you cry out to the Savior today uh, and say, Daddy, lift me up out of my misery. Lift me up out of my pain. Lift me up out of my depression. Lift me up out of my troubled mind. Lift me up out of all this turmoil. I know he will. I said, I know he will. I'm a living witness. Ah, you're a living witness that he'll pick you up. Come on, let's give him some praise, church. Who is it in the house here today? Who is it in the house here today? Your life's been sinking. You feel like you're at a low point. I'm telling you, call on the name that can lift you up. Call the father that can lift you up you need to get up in here lift your hands up in a sign of surrender and move toward God with your worship put some action into it say God I'm tired of, of seeing it like I see it now I'm tired of being where I've been I gotta move toward God and when I move toward God he's gonna pick me up he's gonna enrich my life he's gonna bless my life he's gonna bless my life with salvation he's gonna bless my life with healing he's gonna bless my life with deliverance in the name of Jesus come on let's give him some praise
there's an understanding coming your way in just a moment's time when you truly worship God with your spirit, when you move toward God. Make your move today.
somebody remembers what Pastor Roger said? No worship, no revelation. Little worship, little revelation. Big worship, big revelation. Hallelujah. You know, whenever you gather together with people in a corporate setting like this, you're always going to have some that have no revelation. It's not their fault. Maybe it's their first time being at the church or maybe they just haven't really ever grown. You got others with a little revelation. But thank God you got those with a big revelation. Because those with the big revelation are able to worship Him in such a way where He's able to come and reveal Himself as He truly desires. And then all of a sudden the little revelation becomes big revelation and the no revelation becomes big revelation. Those of us that have a big revelation of God We've got a responsibility every time we gather in the house of the Lord. We can't take a service off. We can't take a prayer meeting off. We can't say, well, I'll let somebody else. No, no, no. We've got to make sure we make his name glorious and his praises ring high. Because when we do that, look what happens. And this is what happened today. Big revelation, people. Hallelujah. Caused the presence of God to move in this place so that others could get close to receiving the Holy Ghost. I think we had one almost receive the Holy Ghost. Others receiving, amen, a healing in their body and touch from the Lord. Oh, praise God for what he has done. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Devin Reedus to bring Hunter up here. Amen. In lieu of this message that you preach, Daddy, lift me up, lift me up. I want Brother Devin to pray a, a, a blessing upon us. Again, I want to say before he does, big thank you, big thank you to our ministry team leaders for making this weekend uh, very important on your schedule. We had a great day Saturday. And then all of you that joined us at 1 o'clock yesterday, we had a great group of people that uh, Pastor Rogers trained for a couple hours. And then what a glorious day today. Let's let Brother and Sister Rogers know we're going to be praying for them and Lifeline Connect Ministry. And Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. For a while, uh, Brother and Sister Newberry that are here today lived in Urbana, and they made this their church home, and they, lo- they know the Rogers real well. But God bless you, Brother and Sister Newberry. Good to see you and everybody else. Mary's here. Leslie was here earlier. Dave and Mona come in at the last. Praise God for every single one. But Daddy, lift your boy up. Let him see what it's like to look out from this direction. <laughs> amen. And pray a prayer blessing over us. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the wonderful word that we were able to have brought to us and listened to today. God, I pray, Lord, that we would take that word and never forget it, Lord, that we would bring it not only within these walls, but we would bring it into our workplaces, our schools, our communities, God. And Lord, that we would let that big worship, God, go on outside of this building, God, sharing it with all of those, Lord, who desperately are searching and looking for an answer, God, within this world. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would be with each and every one of us, God, that you would lead lead us this week and guide us, Lord, through each and every situation that we would face and encounter, God, that you would protect us, Lord, that you would bless us, God, and in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and we give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name.